Good afternoon, everybody. This is Golden Fox, and welcome to a first edition of what I like to call Golden's Gadgets. Um, for those who don't know what that is, it's basically, um, for a little while now, I've been working with um, a couple of little devices or little electronic devices, most notably Game Boys, and I have been uh, taking them, fixing them up, or modding them, which, uh, for those who don't know what that is, it's basically customizing a handheld device. Um, Particularly again with Game Boys, and let's say installing a um, a ha um, like a screen light on much older devices, which at the time used to not be screen lit. So, um, with that being said, <clears throat> I'm just keeping it short here. This is really just something to test the waters up because I'm hosting this on a gaming um, a gaming stream website and I just hope I, that there isn't too much of a problem and I don't know how well this is going to go so I'm really just giving this a shot and doing something else outside of let's plays you know just to add variety so anyway um like I said I have been working with electronic devices and what I'm going to do today are two projects firstly I am going to take this Game Boy here or this Game Boy Color and I'm going to be fixing this up a bit um there's nothing technically wrong with it it still works just fine and everything like I could just turn it on right here but um, what I'm also going to do is that if, I don't know if you can see it closely on this camera here, uh, it might be a little bit scratched up in some areas, but um, that's kind of what happens when you get an old Game Boy that's been around for like almost 20 years now. Um, so what I'm going to do is a couple of things with the major project here, and there's a minor project that I'll explain in a bit, and that is taking the... Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be basically swapping the body color of this and swapping it with something else and that is this one which is an atomic purple um, and along with that I'm going to be installing a, a glass screen or a glass lens which it's literally made of glass so it's not plastic you're not going to get much scratches on there or anything like that and uh, the biggest uh, thing to give to is a front um a front light mod treatment and this is uh this is something you can get at a couple of uh websites that revolve around modding your uh you know modding your hand handhelds and this one in particular i got from retromodding.com um i'll have it linked in the description box so you can check it out um along with that are excuse me <laughs> along with that are a couple of other tools that i also have there are two screwdrivers here um one of which is the phillips screwdriver and this one is a tri-wing screwdriver, which is something you can get online for like a couple of bucks on like Amazon or eBay. And this is kind of important to have because uh, those are the type of screws that are inside this uh, Game Boy and you have to get a tri-wing in order to unscrew these things. Um, and the next thing I also have are two fiber cloths, which are actually very important or kind of yeah, they're important to have in order to clean your screen or clean your lens and everything in order to go through whatever treatments you're going to, uh, to do because your fingerprints are going to get, a, get all over it. And even if you try to, let's say, wipe it with the regular cloth, you're just going to you're going to get a bunch of white marks. Fiber cloths, the uh, you could just wipe it around multiple times until it's like completely shine clean. And um, what I also have here is Loca, which is part of the process of installing the front light treatment. Um, L-O-C-A uh, is what the acronym is, and it stands for Liquid Optic Clear Adhesive. It's a type of glue that you attach with this front light mod, and it dries up in the sunlight. And upon drying it, it helps, um, it helps not only keep the, uh, the front light firmly attached, but it also helps project the screen a lot more cleanly. If you go to install a, um, a front light uh, mod uh, process without loca it's going to look very very misty and foggy it's going to be very difficult to see um if you'd like to know more about this whole game modding stuff um there is a channel it's called this does not compute that's where i found most of the information from um nightfall i i can't read what that says the screen is a little uh, but either way thank you for following <laughs> um so yeah there's that and as for the minor project that i'm going to be working on 
is replacing a, uh, an internal battery inside this uh, Game Boy uh, game here, uh, Pokemon Emerald. The um, the battery has been running dry, and um, I've been getting notifications of this game every time I put it in. I'll explain that sometime later. So, um, okay, thank you for the correction, uh, Nightfall Gaming. So, um, with that being said, uh, there is uh, one more tool that I also have, and that is a solder station, which is a very, this is a, a primary tool that you have to have in order to do your, um, your, um, your mod treatments, because it takes a lot of soldering joints and a lot of wiring to attach inside the circuit board and everything. Um, something I forgot to mention, I did not wet up my sponge, and that's kind of important to have so that way I can wipe off any solder or any lead on here. So, I'll be back in just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and just get this prepared and wet. Okay, so that didn't take too long at all. Um, something I also forgot to mention, my solder station is not plugged in. <laughs> this is part of the trials and errors of setting up everything. Ugh. Shouldn't take long at all. So yeah, this is starting to feel a little bit awkward. Um, my old GBC audio speaker broke. Yeah, um, Game Boy Colors have, um, it's always had a lot of speaker problems. Um, but it is fixable. Uh, you can go online to do many different sites like Retro Modding or uh, Handheld Legend, and you can order a new um, speaker replacement. But again, you gotta have some, you know, uh, soldering experience, which isn't too hard to, um, it's not too hard to know. So right now I'm turning on the soldering station as is, and I'm waiting for this to heat up for the time being, and I think I'm missing one more thing. I may need to... <sighs> Just when I thought I had everything set up, there's like one or two things that I forget, but whatever. <sighs> this is just the first time I'm doing this. So anyway, um, with that being said and done, I'm just going to go ahead and... Um, I'm going to go ahead and get started on uh, taking care of this. So first things first, I need to take the batteries out of this uh, battery compartment here. And um, obviously I took the lid off. Well, there is no lid here. And that's that's kind of how it was. I found this Game Boy online or like eBay for like $10. So it was an easy fix. So I'm going to go ahead and take my, um, my tri-wing screwdriver. And I'm going to get started on taking this apart. So there are two batteries inside this battery compartment here. Uh, not many people notice this whenever it comes to game modding for the first time. And, um, you know, it, it's nothing to be ashamed of if you completely forget about it. But I just feel like I wanted to mention that so far. And sometimes when it comes to taking off the screws, it can get a little uh, challenging. So um, I'm trying to find a place to keep all these... Uh, um, all of these, you know, these hand, uh, we're all, I, I'm trying to find a place for all these screws. <laughs> So, and I don't, I don't mean to jab at anybody. So anyway, you guys are about to see what is inside the Game Boy. So I'm going to go ahead and lift this piece here. So what I'm going to do next is um, there are three Phillips screwdrivers that are on this board here. There's one here, one here, and there's one here that's kind of left unnoticed, or at least from my view, that's behind one of these two uh, battery holders. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take these out. Flip it over and then I'm going to uh, test the uh, the front light and see how well it works. I um, at one point I tried to test the um, I tried to test the um, uh, the front light ma uh, the front light screen, and um, sometimes you know it all depends on what soldering joints you add, and that all very much depends on what Game Boy you own. 
Uh, sometimes if it powers on too powerfully, it'll cause your um, it'll cause your handheld to crash. So. something I forgot about. Uh, when it comes to um, the, uh, the screen itself, I got to uh, remove this uh, ribbon cable here. The ribbon cable is attached to um, a socket that is friction fit and they got these two little pieces. I don't know if I can show that or not. Um, it's kind of hard trying to angle this correctly. Um, there's a little, dude, these little latches here. You got to carefully, um, you got to be careful when it comes to uh, lifting these. And this helps um, get the ribbon cable to uh, be fit properly. Okay, so I got them both out. Carefully lifting the ribbon cable. There we go. So, um, so yeah, this is the motherboard that controls the Game Boy. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this over here for right now. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out a way to uh, get this, um, uh, this screen off. And I'm just, I'm just thinking out loud. <clears throat> While I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the membranes and the buttons and put those aside. And um, that way I can have a much better focus on um, taking care of the, uh, taking care of the screen here. There it goes. <laughs> well, there goes the screen. Just popped right out and started flying like it's going to Neverland. Um, just checking the uh, the screen in and of itself. So, so yeah, this is the uh, this is the the screen that projects the game. It's very fascinating, or at least to me personally, that um, <laughs> that I'm showing this. So, now that I got that out, I'm going to go ahead and put this aside. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and place back in the uh, the Game Boy here. I'm gonna reattach um, a majority of uh, these things and test it out to see if the front light works. So, so what I'm gonna do right now is that I'm going to attach the wires of this uh, this panel here and. There are these soldering joints that you have to test out and see which ones work and which ones uh, which ones don't. So the first thing I am going to do is let's assume I'm going to well I'm going to pretend that I'm like attaching it right now so that way I'll know where to place the um, place the wires and everything. So um, trying to find a place for the wires and what have you gets a little tricky. So test everything out and see how well it works.
Oh, wow. Okay, so I think it's a little too powerful here, so I'm going to work with another uh, soldering joint. I think I may have caused the uh, Game Boy to crash. I'm going to go ahead and take apart my other Game Boy Color. So the Game Boy now works, the screen light works. We got a win-win here. Like, in order to check which side is which, before you, like, when it comes to ordering one of these, you're gonna have these little, like, pl uh, plastic uh, labels or protection sheets, and you will have to get those off. But before you do, um, run, your, run your nail across the, um, gently run your nail across the, uh, the panel. And if it feels rough, that's the part that's supposed to be sticking up. And when you feel the smooth side, that's where it faces down um, towards the lens. And I'm saying that because um, th uh, the rough ends are they're supposed to be like little crystal um, pieces that are supposed to help project, um, to help project uh, the, the, the screen better. Um, but in the meantime, um, uh, the next step I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a fiber cloth and it's best that I uh, start to wipe this down. Already I got some fingerprints on this thing, so not to worry. It takes a little bit of patience, a couple little swipes across. Um, don't add too much pressure. You don't want to risk uh, damaging the liquid crystals that are inside the uh, screen itself. And it looks looks shiny clean. All right, cool. So um, I always have a habit of losing track of which side is which. So. Don't be surprised if I'm running my finger across to check which end is which, and okay, so this is the side down. As you see at the bottom here, I got the uh, there's this aluminum tape here. You want to get that off on this end because if the um, if the liquid does not properly um, it does not if it does not properly dry, uh, some of the remains of the loca are going to stay wet, and it's going to start leaking through the um, it's going to start to crack through uh, the dried um, portions of the look. Uh, they call it spidering. It causes a huge problem with your screen, and it's a whole different can of worms. So right now, I am currently getting this off, this aluminum tape here. Um, it is good to put this to use, especially for the front side, because without it, um, there's a weird thing that I discovered. Uh, some of these, um, some of these glass lens, um, the text itself is like see-through and it'll start to like shine right through. And it's, even though it would look cool at first that you see Game Boy Color shine through, it also shines through some of the black and it doesn't look properly consistent. So, um, I, I wouldn't recommend doing that. All right. So I guess the next thing to do. Again, I got to make sure that everything is properly wiped off. I better look at the lens again. Oh, I got like a little mark on there. I think we're about ready to apply the loco. This is the most delicate step, or at least to me that is. And once it goes on, it goes on. Like you can like take it apart and reattach it again. I just hope that I get this right. It is a little bit runny, so it's going to slide around for a couple of times. And this is the part that I was talking about for the reason um, I used a paper towel to place it here. So that way I can get a good grip, flipping it over. All right. I don't know if you're able to see it or not, but it's currently spreading right now. Right now there's a couple of uh, bowls here. Um, you may want to try to get those two, just wiggle it around and make sure that, you know, all of the bubbles are off the edge and everything. So, 
It takes a little bit of time to get it through. Don't worry about it drying because um, it dries through sunlight. And upon the process of drying uh, through sunlight, it takes about 30 minutes to an hour or so whereabouts. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna put this next to a window sill where it has direct sunlight. And I also have to take off this, um, this aluminum strip here, because again, you gotta take this off. Otherwise, uh, the locust's not gonna dry properly and you're gonna start to experience spidering, which is, um, I've explained this earlier, but I don't think I gave a clear answer. It's some of the locust that did not properly dry because some of the sunlight cannot get past the, uh, the reflective strip. And the wetness starts to crack through the uh, the dry loca, and it creates um, it creates uh, you're basically going to get a lot of problems with the screen. Again, um, I would recommend uh, this does not compute. That's where um, Colin explains all of this. And apparently, I'm having trouble trying to get this off. Apparently, I'm getting some loca on my fingers, so. In the meantime, I'm going to go through a short process of replacing um, the battery on uh, Pokemon Emerald here. Um, like I said before, uh, the, the battery was running dry, and um, I really feel as though I should show you what I'm talking about. <laughs> right, so what I have here is the original Game Boy Advance model with uh, red sh um, a red uh, um, housing that I put on here. And there's a little bit of a thing that it says when the game starts. So, uh, this thing is backlit, or it's got a backlit screen involved. I'm going to go ahead and uh, close the blinds here. The internal battery has run dry. The game can be played. However, clock-based events will no longer occur. So, um, to me, I feel as though a, um, a, a battery, uh, a new internal battery is going to be placed in here. Uh, Jedi, the reason why this one is red is it's a custom one. Um, this model here, or this housing here, I ordered from a website called, um, uh, what is it called? Uh, Rose Color Gaming. And Derek, to answer your question, yes, I do have the Game Boy SP. And here it is. This one is front lit once I uh, turned it on. Oh, there we go. And there is a difference between the two. This one just has a lighting that's on the front, which is a similar effect to uh, the Game Boy Color. Um, and there's uh, some of these models called the AGS-101, and it's backlit, but this one isn't. So again, this little message here saying the uh, battery's running dry. Right, so that being said, um, this is a fairly simple procedure. Um, so most Game Boy cartridges come with um, tri-wing screws, and again, you have to acquire a tri-wing screwdriver. So I'm going to go ahead and just take this apart. Just put this on the side for now. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is take out the uh, shell itself. you got to press this down, and then you can lift the front. So here's the battery right there. And the next thing I'm going to do is install a new one. Now part of the process of installing a battery is to identify which parts are negative and which one is positive. So I'm going to go ahead and put that here. And I'm trying to look at the uh, 
which parts are which. Okay. Sometimes you'll be able to see it, sometimes you don't. I don't know if I can show it on the circuit board here. Um, once it clears up. Do, 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 do. Come on. Come on, focus on this. All right, fine, fuck you, don't do that. But if you ever take this apart, and let's say you want to replace an internal battery, if you look carefully, you'll see a plus sign next to the soldering joint, or you'll find a negative sign or a minus sign next to the other soldering joint. These indicate which ones are positive and which ones are negative. So, uh, to identify with that, um, I'm gonna see, okay, so this is the positive end, and this is the negative end. So, this is the positive side, and this soldering tank, or this attachment here, which is called a soldering tank, is attached to the surface. So this end would mean that it's positive, which means it's gonna go right here. And, yeah, and this end is the negative um, attachment, which goes straight to the, neg uh, the negative side. But I'm flipping this around in order to make things a little easier. So I'm just gonna place this here for now. And I'm going to, uh, as the next step, I gotta close this up. <laughs> I'm doing so many things at once. There we go. Ooh, excuse me. So I'm gonna put this aside, this aside. There's really nothing else I need at the moment. So time to take apart this battery. There are some other steps of getting Game Boy's uh, internal batteries out of the Game Boy cartridges. And come on. Oh, oh, I think I. Some people use like aluminum foil, but unfortunately I don't have any, so I had to find another process of attaching. Okay, so apparently I'm going to have to go for a, um, a bigger uh, soldering piece. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this off and let this cool down for a bit and pull out uh, the best tool for, uh, well, okay, not best tool, but the best shape to help take these out. These are really, really big solder joints that you would have to have a bigger solder piece. This is something that I really should have been prepared for, but again, this is all trial and error, so you catch what I mean. All right, so I'm going to take this off. This is probably what keeps it like really, really hot and everything. So, um, oh wow, look at this thing. It used to be all shiny, now it's like, not anymore. So I'm gonna put this piece back on. Oh yeah, it's hot right now. So hopefully I should be able to get this, um, get this uh, battery off. There we go, that's one end. Let me see if I can try to find another technique to this. All right, gravity, do your thing. Okay, I guess that didn't work. Ah, shit. Yeah, that was not smart of me. Okay, I got that one off. And it looks like the other solder reattach the other side of the battery there we go now that that's off again let's see so so hopefully this should be attached properly I gotta wait until this cools down a little I just hope I didn't cook the motherboard or anything like that shouldn't be too big to worry about so I'm gonna go ahead and put this lead roll aside Let's see how well it works. I'm going to go ahead and reattach the game itself. I'm not going to screw it on just yet. Oh! Okay. That's scary as hell. Alright, let's try this again. All right, there we go. 
as soon as I like started the game, you saw the uh, little Nintendo logo at the bottom. It was all scrambled. Huh. That's interesting. That is very interesting. But here's the thing that happened. Um, as soon as I like, normally, whenever it comes to like replacing a battery, it, um, it, like, all the memory was wiped out. So as soon as I put a new battery in there, the memory was kept saved, and I, I didn't get that little message. Maybe it's just a little thing that's happening, so. I'm gonna test and see again if it's working properly. Um, I, this could be, I'm just testing this a few times to making sure that, you know, everything works properly because uh, that was the first time I've ever, like, started a Game Boy game after uh, installing a battery that had, you know, the scrambled text for Nintendo. Yeah. I plan to start a new game either way because, you know, it's been a really long time since I played this one. All right, so the front screen is a little bit, uh, like, it's pretty dirty. But I'm not too worried about that because I think it's capable of being clean. Um, hang on, I gotta get this off. Can I have any... There we go. So, um, hopefully there shouldn't be any spidering whatsoever. Just checking to see about the leftover goo that is left over. Yeah, some of that is still left over. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the circuit board and reattach the wiring. So. Um, it's a little spotty in a couple of areas. Um, most of that is largely due to the... Alright, so um, I think the next step I'm going to take care of is try to do a cotton swab and get some of that look off. Um, I should get that ready. Alright, um, I'm gonna have to figure out some way to like get a, like a separate cloth and get that off because man, I really caused a mess on that. Um, I don't know if a fiber cloth will get it off or whatnot. Um, so, um, by this point, I pretty much run through the major process and everything. Uh, I've got the screen lid installed and every uh, not screen lid but also uh, the glass plate and everything so I'm gonna go ahead and call this a call this a day and go ahead and just um, I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream so uh, thank you all for watching um, I hope you guys enjoyed this and hopefully um, the next time I stream one of these uh, silly episodes it'll be um, hopefully it should be much better so until next time I'm Golden Fox and take care mm -hmm.